Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from creativecodingclub.com and last week I put out this web animation challenge stating that 99% of web developers could not complete this animation. Well, a few one percenters stepped up and offered some really intriguing solutions, all right? So today what we're gonna do is go through their solutions pretty quickly and then I'll show you sort of a very quick step-by-step -step of how I approached it, all right? And I wanna tell you, I was pretty surprised by these solutions and I think there's something for us to learn from each of them. So let's get into it. So the first solution by had me totally taken aback. I had no idea how it was working. I came to this page where I saw this cryptic SVG code and I see this animation on the right here. Well, after a little digging, I came to learn that this was a new syntax to write SVG, which is sort of like Markdown. You just write these very simple codes and what they do is get transpiled into this SVG output here. So although it's not beautifully formatted, it's just pure SVG code. And if we investigate it a bit, you'll find important things like there's actually two paths being animated, which is a common solution that we'll see more of. But what's unique to this solution is that the animation is being strictly controlled by these animate tags that are animating the stroke dash offset. And I really have to applaud this solution for being the most unique and surprising one, all right? I think it's just brilliant. And this led me to investigate a little bit more about this syntax. And there is a blog article here that explains everything you pretty much need to know. So I'll link that up for you. And over in this SVG playground, I strongly recommend that you go through the other examples here. They are absolutely phenomenal. It's crazy that you can generate this beautiful artwork here with just this small snippet of code. All of these examples are worth looking into as I'm sure they can inspire you to do more with SVG. Our next solution comes from Daryl, who used Lottie Lab to create a Lottie animation. I was completely unfamiliar with Lottie Lab, so again, it was very interesting to see this solution. Daryl went ahead and created an entire video with voiceover showing his real-time exploration and building of the animation. I've sped it up here and edited some parts out, but it's just a few short minutes and it's very impressive that he got the desired result in very little time. And I have to say, it looks great. Moving on to more traditional approaches, this demo here by Amit Sheen uses two paths inside a mask. Now you may be saying, what do you mean two paths? It looks like a circle, a line, and a circle. Well, for this second path here, I'm gonna change this X value here to be 300. And what you're going to see is the paths separate, okay? So you have two paths being animated simultaneously. Now, these paths are being defined inside of a mask, and that mask is being applied to this foreign object. I'm not terribly familiar with foreign objects, but this is working great. And if we pop into the CSS, what you're going to see is that what's happening on every path element is this animation is being applied. And this foreign object here is filled with a gradient and again, it's being masked by the animation. And one little thing I wanna point out is that with this approach, it's very important to know the length of the stroke so that you can use it for the stroke dash array and the animating of the stroke dash offset here. Right now, this path has a length of 1200. If the path changes its length, these numbers need to be updated. And I'm only pointing it out as it's a very common approach and we're gonna learn a little trick in the next demo. In this demo here, Jay took a similar approach by using two paths inside a mask, but I wanna point out that path length is set to one here. So if you actually force this value to one, what it will do is make your CSS a lot easier where you can just use a dash offset of a number like one here, okay? I imagine there's a little bit added on here to probably take care of a little gap or something, and that's perfectly normal to see. For a few extra points, he added the ability to go to level two by adding the mask, and then you can go to level three and activate the undrawing that you're going to see right now. So definitely extra points here, great job. And it was nice to learn about this little path length trick. And lastly, 
Alvaro Montoro had a few submissions, but I want to point out this single div one, all right? No SVG at all. And he's doing some fancy stuff with the at property here, okay? And you'll see there's quite a bit of keyframe animation code in here as well. And I invite you to explore this more on your own with the understanding that it's not going to work in all browsers. So what did I tell you? There's plenty to learn from these different approaches, right? Well, right now, I'm gonna show you how I pretty much started this whole challenge from scratch, all right? This isn't supposed to be a step-by-step -step tutorial where you're gonna learn everything I'm doing, all right? I just want you to sort of see how I approach things because really all of this stuff is documented in depth in my SVG animation course. So this is just sort of a refresher for most of my students, all right? So sit back and take a look at how I would do it. So I started off with a blank code pen file, no HTML, no CSS, I've got some JSON here that we'll deal with in a little bit, but I had to just start creating an SVG. So I started by just adding an SVG tag with a basic view box, and adding a basic circle was easy enough. I'm not gonna force you to watch me type everything out. The next thing I need to do was add a line and another circle. Now clearly when I was typing these things out, I had to put a little bit of thought into where the center of the circle would be, its radius, where the next line would start and end, and of course where the next circle would begin. But I'm confident in saying it didn't take me any more than five minutes to get this artwork that you see here on the left. So now it's time to animate, and in the JavaScript, I have a timeline ready to go and GS Dev Tools ready to go, and with Draw SVG, it's easy enough to create a simple from tween that just animates from a draw SVG value of zero. And we get something like this. If I scrub back, you're going to see that SVG circles are going to start their strokes on the right here, okay? So that's not exactly what I want. I wanna start drawing from the top and draw equally out from both sides, all right? And that's a little bit tricky, however, I didn't need to think about this at all because it was already handled in a previous lesson. In SVG animation with Greensock, we have an entire chapter with nine lessons covering SVG strokes, all right? We start off by just explaining exactly how the stroke dash array works, and we do this very simple marching ants effect. Then we go into drawing animated lines, and you'll do simple things like revealing lines and things like a rectangle too, all right? We always start with the basics. And then we wanna go beyond that, we'll jump into what Draw SVG can do for us. And the true power of Draw SVG is that we can set the beginning and end values of our strokes and animate between them, all right? Using percents, pixel values, string values like true. If it's just a single value like 10%, we'll just show 10% of the stroke. Again, I'm not gonna teach you all of Draw SVG here because of course it's covered in that lesson. But you can see just an idea of some of the different things we can do with all of the different demos that you know I've provided for you here, all right? All common stuff that you're gonna wanna tap into someday. Drawing from center, very handy. And lastly here, we allow a segment to go seamlessly through a path and also loop, all right? So you'll see that once it goes through the end here, it's going to boom, pop up on the other side, all right? So it can be halfway at the end and halfway at the beginning at the same time. But what we're really going to tap into here is the Draw SVG Mastery lesson, all right? Where we go a little bit beyond the basics of Draw SVG. We programmatically determine this center point of a rectangle and draw from it. And here's what we really want, this demo that will draw from ends and erase from ends, okay? So with our circle, we're going to start from where the ends of the circle stroke meet, draw towards the center, and then eventually erase from the ends, all right? So I didn't wanna think about the values at all. So I wanna show you that from what we've already covered, I can just pop into the JavaScript here. We can hide the results so you can see this a little bit better. And I'm just going to take out these two lines of code here without even thinking, pop back into our demo, paste them in, and we're just going to update the curve to be circle one in both of these tweens. And now you get that. All right, what did we see real quick? Remember the circle gets split here and we're going to draw from there and then end perfectly and then undraw or erase, okay? 
Now clearly things are rotated around weird, and at this stage of the game I didn't want to have to try to convert these numbers and just blindly guess at stuff. So now I'm just going to use a GSAP set to rotate both of the circles negative 90 degrees and set the transform origin to their centers. And now you'll see that circle draws in from the top and erases. Well, we don't really need the erasing part right now, I'll save that for later. After the top circle draws itself in, we're going to want the line to draw from an SVG value of 0. And right after that, we want the second circle here to do exactly what the first circle did. So I'm just going to copy out that tween there. We're going to do a little paste and change circle 1 to circle 2. And that gives us the first part of the animation perfectly done. We can go back with GS Dev Tools, way to the beginning, first circle draws in, boom, line comes in, second circle. And since I was able to just copy and paste this code, doing this whole animation literally took me like two or three minutes when I did it the first time around. Now, although I eventually undraw everything, it was at this point where I thought, hmm, wouldn't this look cool if instead of using a solid color, you know, we had a gradient in there that looked real fancy. Now I would never take the time really to hand code a gradient and make it into a mask. So I'm going to show you how to do it really quickly in Boxy SVG. I'm just going to go to the HTML. I'm going to select all of my SVG code, do a command C to copy it. And now in Boxy SVG, I'm going to do a file new from clipboard, which is going to open a new tab with my SVG right there and waiting for me. All right. Beautiful. Now just as a proof of concept, I'm going to go fairly quickly and just make a rectangle and fill it with a gradient. So we'll just go to the fill panel here, select a linear gradient. We'll go to the edit tool and I'll just very quickly modify the color stops. Again, there's a full lesson on this, so I don't need to explain it piece by piece. That's good enough for now. So now let me just select this rectangle. I'm going to move it out of the way. I'm going to select my circles and line, do a command G to group them together. And now I want to get the gradient on top of my fun little shape there. Now I can't see it, so I'm just going to pop on over to what's called the objects panel and I'm going to put the group on top. And in order to make my group act as a mask to reveal the gradient, I'm going to select the rectangle, shift click on the grouping, go to the composites panel and just click on mask. Now what you'll see is that the gradient is just very faded coming through that shape. And that's because the color of my mask shape dictates the strength of the colors shining through. I need it to be full white to get the full opacity of the gradient. We'll fix that in the code. So let's just hop over to the elements panel. I'm going to select the SVG, copy outer SVG, jump back into code pen, and I'm just going to paste in the code that Boxy made for me. And now you'll see my animation runs with the masking applied. Again, it's faded out because we need to have a white shape in order for all of the gradient to shine through. And that can be fixed very easily here by just changing out blue for white wherever we've used it. And there we are. Isn't that beautiful? So I don't need to go through everything else line by line. We've already shown you how we can start undrawing things here. So once the animation plays through, the top circle will undraw. And to finish it up, I'll just do a little paste here. We'll move both the points of the line segment to 100%, 100%, and do this same animation on circle two. And there you have it. We have our full animation, and it was done in just a matter of minutes. And with a little CSS tweaking, just a nice dark background and some code formatting, everything just looks beautiful, all right? So folks, I really hope you enjoyed this little overview of this challenge. When I put these challenges out there, I really just want you to think about, you know, how would you do this, all right? In the world of front-end development, you never know what a client is going to ask you to do, all right? 
and uh, I really hope that you took the challenge, you gave it a shot, and if not, you at least learned something from all the different solutions I showed you today, because I know I learned a few things too, all right? And it's not always just about the specific challenge, it's about how can we take this a little bit further, all right? Is there a real world application for this? And I kept thinking, you know, it's really nice that these circles can kind of draw from the top and then come down, but what if I want them to go right and then left and at a weird angle, you know, how would that exactly look? So I couldn't let it go, so I took a little bit of time and I came up with this example here where I have the circles drawing in from a whole bunch of different directions and the lines always come out of exactly where the strokes get closed off, all right? So what I'll do is go kind of slow through here and you'll see that as soon as the strokes close to the right, boom, the line starts drawing. And now the circle is gonna start drawing from the left side. It's gonna close on the bottom where the line's gonna come out. The next circle draws from the top it's gonna close at this sort of 45 degree angle where a line comes in, the next circle draws from there, and then up, okay? And I was able to do all this because I'm tapping into a function I created that is going to return the perfect circle animation, all right? I'm gonna pass in the circle, the enter angle, and the leave angle, and that function figures out everything I need. For a quick little peek, it looks something like this, okay? And I'll go over this in a future lesson, but we've gotten really long today. But one more thing I wanted to show you where this can go is a scroll-driven approach. Keep an eye on the left here. You'll see that we are drawing a stroke around each of these different colored circles here, and we're revealing this really nice gradient, all right? And what's fun about this is that everything is dynamic here based on the positions of the headings, all right? I'm gonna measure the height of this heading, where it is, place this circle right in the middle of it, place the stroke circle right where it should be, and then draw a line to the next one. And it actually works out quite nice. And I'm also positioning the color stops in the gradient based on the position of these circles, all right? So everything is dynamic. And if we do a little resize, keep an eye on the size of the text, you'll see that it shrinks thus changing the distance between the headers, and it still is going to resize. Everything gets recalculated, and it works really nice too, all right? I'll admit this was a bit of a challenge, but I was really pleased with the results. But don't worry, these last two demos, I'll definitely make videos for my students and share them where I can, all right? And although these are fairly advanced, you always gotta know the basics. How do you get a stroke to go around a circle and into a line? So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please check out all of the people who contributed solutions here. There's something to learn from all of them. Follow them and have a good day.